Hey folks, this is Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be UFC 105 predictions. We're going to start with the first fight, Randy Couture versus Brandon Bear. Basically, I see this boiling down to one thing. If Randy Couture can get his hands on you, he's likely going to beat you down on the ground with ground and pound. And Brandon Bear does not have one punch knockout power. I mean, he may knock that a guy or two, but he it's not his thing. It ain't like Chuck Liddell, you know, that kind of power and accuracy and whatnot. So what I see happening is I see Randy, Randy Couture having a strategy to get in close to Brandon Vera and, Brandon, and grabbing Brandon Vera, putting him on the ground and ground and pounding sort of like a Gonzaga fight. With that said, there are a few things to consider. And I... For you Randy lovers, I'm not beating up on Randy. I love Randy just as much as you do. I'm just pointing out the facts. Don't kill the messenger. I was never as happy watching a fight when Randy Couture beat down Tim Sylvia. I loved it. So, this is not nothing negative on Randy. It's just pointing out the facts. Randy is starting to look old. Before, to me, it was just a number. Oh, Randy's 43. Who cares? He looks like he's, he, he's acting young. But Randy is starting to look old. I'm starting to see age on him. And I'm not saying... I'm starting to see it in physical, but I'm also seeing it in his actions. And so, that may not bode well for Randy in this fight. Plus, Randy's an, not probably not going to be an underdog in this fight, so that doesn't bode well for him. Randy typically does not do well when he's not an underdog. I mean, yeah, when he's not an underdog. When he is an underdog, he usually performs excellent. So... However, Randy Couture is a beast at 205. We all know that. He was a beast last time at 205. He's going to be a beast this time at 205. So, you know, you got the age, plus he's moving down. It's, there's a lot of things going on. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Let me see what else we got here. Okay, Brandon. Brandon Bear. Brandon Bear knows if he comes in a fight with Randy Couture without his A game, he's going to get beat down. So, I know... We're going to see the best Brandon Vera we've ever seen because if he doesn't, he's going to get beat down and hurt bad by Randy. So, that's going to be a major motivating factor for Brandon Vera. Okay. The, Brandon's last fight against, uh, I'm going to screw this name up, Kristoff Sozinski. I was really impressed because I thought Sozinski was going to come in and just impose his will. And within the first 30 seconds, Sozinski realized, or Kristoff realized, he wasn't going to be able to pose his will on Brandon. And Brandon was going to be able to pose his will. So I knew 30 seconds within that fight, it was over. I mean, it was just a matter of calculations, and it was over. As far as I was concerned, that's pretty much like it happened. So maybe Brandon's one of those tall, linky guys that doesn't look like much, that actually is a lot more than he looks like. So, you know, maybe he can keep Randy off. If he keeps Randy off, I don't see Randy out striking I don't I really don't see him out striking however Brandon can't keep Randy off it's an ass beating and we know it so anyway the most surprising thing would be if if Randy took him down and Brandon submitted him that would be the most I, I, I would have never seen that coming so who knows maybe that's what happened okay let's see this is going to tell a lot about both these guys if Randy beats down Brandon Vera it doesn't look good for Brandon Vera he's probably he ain't ever going to be a champion at 205. If Brandon beats down Randy, you know, beats Randy pretty good, then maybe Randy's not going to stay around much longer in the fight game. However, if either one of those guys totally dominates the other guy, they're ready for a title shot. So, anyway, let's see if anything else. Uh, I'm going to give the slight edge to Randy Couture at 55%, and that obviously at least 45% left for Brandon Vera. And I, and I think, like I said, I think it all boils down to Randy can develop a strategy to get a hold of Brandon. And once he gets a hold of Brandon, he's going to take him down, beat him down. And from that point, it's it's a calculation and it's just a formality, you know, just beating him down. However, Brandon could knock him out, so well, it's, it's going to be an interesting fight. Next fight. Mike Swick versus Dan Hardy. I really like this fight. Even though Dan Hardy can be a prick, I sort of like the guy. I, do, I like that he he mixes it up. He brings a little... I like the mohawk. It just... He brings a certain persona to the game that, you know... 
And he don't really look like a tough guy, but he is a really tough guy. So, however, Dan Harding likes to get under the guy's skin who he's fighting. He likes to do that. He's not going to be able to do that for Mike Swick. And he even mentions that in his in his video post or pre-fight commentary. And, um, and usually when a guy enjoys getting under your skin, that makes him feel good, confident going in a fight. But when he can't do it, the guy that feels confident that he can get when he gets under your skin also feels insecure when he can't get under your skin. So it's a double-edged sword. I think it's going to be a big disadvantage for Dan Harding that he can't really get under Mike Swick's skin. And also, this is not really, in my opinion, a big test for Mike Swick. Or let me rephrase it: not a bigger. This is not the biggest test of Mike Swick's career. Mike Swick, I believe, is had is equal test as Dan, as Dan Harding presents. However, Dan Harding, I think this is the biggest test of Dan Harding's career. And if he does well in this, I I think if either one of these guys does exceptionally well against the other guy, it's ready, they're ready for a title contention. I think it's a given, really. Well, maybe not a given, but it's pretty close. Um, let's see what else I have to say on this. Yeah, I said that. I said that already. So basically, Mike Squick has a bigger experience. He has the bigger name in this fight. He has more to lose. I'm going to give the, the slight edge to uh, Mike Swick at 55%. Dan Harding, 45%, obviously. And it, it really doesn't matter to me who wins. I, I, I wouldn't matter if Dan Harding wins. So anyway, let's go on to the next fight. But I really am looking forward to seeing it because I think it's going to tell us a lot about either one of those guys. Next fight. Michael Viz, Bisbing versus Dennis Kane. I really can't judge it because I haven't seen enough Dennis Kane in the UFC, which I don't know if he's ever fought in the UFC. I don't think he has. It's all outside of it, which, you know, a guy can be absolutely phenomenal outside the UFC, but when you top, step in with top flight, top flight competition every single time, that, that really lets me know how you're going to compete in the UFC. And Dennis Kane may be a, a Anderson Silva kind of guy, or he may be like the last guy that fought the... I can't even remember the guy's name now. He just came in from some... He was a champ at some other organization. Fought the Mexican guy at heavyweight. Oh, I can't even remember. Anyway. So, he... I really can't judge. So, I have to give advantage to Bisbing. And, you know, I just have... I have to see more Dennis Kane to know how to judge him. So, I, I can't really say much about it. And since I don't know, I'm going to go with the guy I know. I'm going to go with Bisbing. Don't have no clue what's going to happen. Next fight. James Wilkes versus Matt Brown. I really like James Wilkes. I like the way he performed on the Ultimate Fighter. I think the, when I look at the guy and seen how he performed and just the, the strength of his mind, it look he reminds me of a guy who can be the champ someday. That does not bode well for Matt Brown. Matt Brown, I've never once thought Matt Brown's a guy who can be the champ someday. Never once. I think James Wilkes will take out Matt Brown in the first round. Don't know how on the feet or on the ground. I see him completely dominating Matt Brown. No disrespect to any of the fighters because, you know, I don't want to get in there. They're tough guys, every one of them. So if you happen to be a fighter, watch it. Don't take it personal. I'm just commentating. That's all this is. <laughs> it's not a challenge to you. Okay. Uh, next point. I'll be doing a post-fight video about 30 minutes to an hour after this, uh, after the event, and so, you know, it'll take me a little bit to upload it, so, like I said, within 30 minutes to an hour, I have a video out there, and you can, we can chit-chat about it, what, in the comment, in the comment section. Anyway, if you don't mind, please rate the video, and later, folks.